ocean salesman. Why not? All aboard! Across state line into Iowa. Cigarettes illegal in this state. What's the matter with crediting? It's, it's old fashioned. Charlie, you're an anvil salesman. Your firm give credit? No, sir. Nor anybody else. River City! River City next! All aboard! Cash for the merchandise. Cash for the button hooks. Cash for the cotton goods. Cash for the hard goods. Cash for the soft goods. Cash for the fancy goods. Cash for the noggins and the piggins and the perkins. Cash for the hogshead, cask and dummy junk. Cash for the crackers and the pickles and the fly paper. Look, what do you talk? 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 What do you get? What do you talk? You can talk, you can talk, you can bicker, you can talk. You can bicker, 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 you can talk, you can talk, you can talk, 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 bicker, bicker, bicker. You can talk all you wanna, but it's different than it was. No, it ain't, no, it ain't, but you gotta know the territory. Right, so why don't you forward me the trouble? Made the people want to go, want to get, want to get, want to get up and go. 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 22, 23 miles to the county seat. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Who's going to patronize a little bitty two-by-four kind of store anymore? What are you talking? What are you talking? Where do you get it? Not the Model T at all. Take a gander at the store, at the modern store, at the present-day store, at the present-day modern departmentalized grocery store. What are you talking? 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 Where do you get it? What are you talking? What are you talking? What are you talking? Where do you get it? You can talk, you can bicker, you can talk, you can bicker. You can talk, 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 bicker, bicker, bicker. You can talk all you want to, but it's different than it was. No, it ain't, but you gotta know the territory. Gone, gone, gone with the hog's head, cask and Debbie John. Gone with the sugar barrel, pickle barrel, milk pan. Gone with the tub and the pail and the tears. Ever meet a fellow by the name of Hill? 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 No! Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. I never heard of any salesman Hill. No, he doesn't know the territory. Doesn't know the territory? What's a fellow's lie? Never worries about his lie. Never worries about his lie? Or a doggone thing. He's just a bank. He's building a big hall freight, gold neck and nothing, rip roaring every time a bullseye salesman. That's Professor Harold Hill. Harold Hill. Tell us what's his lie. What's his lie? He's a fake and he doesn't know the territory. Free you talk, free you talk, free you talk, free you talk. He's a music man. He's a what? He's a what? He's a music man and he sells clarinets to the kids in the town with the big trombones and the rat a tat drums and the big brass face, big brass face. And the piccolo, the piccolo, uniforms too, with a shiny gold braid on the coat and a great big stripe running. Well, I don't know much about bands, but I do know you can't make a living selling big trombones. No, sir. Mandolin picks, perhaps, and you're in there a Jew's heart. No, the fella sells bands, boys' bands. I don't know how he does it. But he lives like a king, and he gallies, and he gathers, and he plucks, and he shines. And when the man dances, certainly, boys, what else? The piper pays him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the man dances, certainly, boys, what else? The piper pays him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he doesn't know the territory. Population 2212. All good? Well, if you're all through, I'll tell you about Harold Hill. You really know Harold Hill? Never saw him in my life. But I know this much. He's given every one of us a black eye. Why, after he's worked the town over, the next salesman to arrive automatically gets tarred and feathered and rode out to the city limits on a rail. <laughs> well, you think that's funny, huh? Wait till it happens to you. The hair on your chest never grows back. But why should he get rode out of town on a rail? Because in order to sell band instruments and uniforms and instruction books, he's got the guarantee to teach them kids how to play. Well? And to form them kids into a boys' band with himself as the leader. What's wrong with that? He don't know one note from another. That's what's wrong with that. And he can't tell a bass drum from a pipe organ. Uh, I'll catch up with that swindling two-bit thimble rigger. And when I do, I'll squeal on him so well, loud. Well, you dad, Charlie. I'd sure like to be around when you catch up with that fella. <laughs> uh, well, I won't be on this trip. <laughs> Not now. Not even the great Professor Harold Hill would try to sell those neck bold Hawkeyes out there. All aboard! Gentlemen, you intrigue me. I think I'll have to give Iowa a try. Uh, say, I don't believe I caught your name. I don't believe I dropped it.
hospital, and nobody come to see me. Uh-uh. Cousin Will never come. Oh. Aunt Bertha never come. Oh, your Aunt Bertha is dead. Well, she wouldn't have come anyway. <laughs> we can be cold and alone in the morning. in a rig for Sunday, if you can accommodate me. Well, then I reckon you ought to talk to the man in charge of hiring rigs. <clears throat> Who is late again, as usual. Oh, thank you. Marcellus Gregory! Of all the people are running to an Iowa, Gregory! Oh, shh, shh, shh. Hill's the name on this trip, Professor Harold Hill. Oh, yeah, but Greg, why didn't you tell me he was coming? I didn't know I was myself. Besides, I never thought a slicker like you'd end up here in the sarsaparilla belt. Yeah. This is where I work. Oh, uh, you mean you live here? Yeah, I know. It ain't Brooklyn. Oh. But there's too many close shades the way you work. Besides, got me a nice, comfortable girl now. Ethel Koffelmeyer, boss's niece. Oh, uh, gone legitimate, huh? I knew you'd come to no good. So, what's the pitch? La -da 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 -da. Greg, you're not back in the band business, are you? I heard you was in steam automobiles. I was. What happened? Somebody actually invented one. No. Mm. Now, give me the lowdown here, Mars. Hey, you never get anywhere in the band business with these stubborn Iowans, Greg. Anything they don't already have, they do without. They got music? Ah, uh, they got a gramophone down the barber shop. They got a stuck-up librarian, Gibbs Piano. Gibbs Piano? Yeah, maiden lady. She'll expose you before you get your grip up pat. Oh, no, Mars. You know maiden lady librarians are a specialty of mine. I'll just back her into a corner and breathe on her glasses. Yeah. <laughs> now, if she passes by, point her out to me. I will. So, how are you going to start the pitch, huh? Same old way. Keep that music teacher off balance, and then my next step will be to get your town out of the serious trouble it's in. River City isn't in any trouble. And I've got to create some. I've got to create a desperate need for a boy's band, you remember. Now, what's new around here? What could I use? Oh, nothing. No, oh, except the billiard parlor just put in a new pool table. You mean they've never had a pool table here before? No, only billiards. <laughs> That'll do. Now, see you later, Mars. And don't forget, music teacher? Music teacher. Ah, uh, Mr. Dunlop? Yep. Either you're closing your eyes to a situation you don't wish to acknowledge, or you are not aware of the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community. Well, you've got trouble, my friend. Right here, I say trouble right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a billiard player, certainly mighty proud to say. I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider the hours I spend with a cue in my hand golden. Help you cultivate horse sense and a cool head and a keen eye. Did you ever take and try to give an ironclad leave to yourself from a three-rail billiard shot? But just as I say it takes judgment, brains, maturity to score in a ball blind game, I say that any boob can take and shove a ball in a pocket. And I call that sloth the first big step on the road to the depths of degradation. I say first it's a little medicinal wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle. And the next thing you know, your son is playing for money in a pitch back suit and listening to some big out-of-town jazz for him. 
hearing him tell about horse race gambling. Not a wholesome trot race, no, but a race where you set down and ride on a horse. I'd like to see some stuck-up jockey boy sitting on Dan Patch. Make your blood boil? Well, I should say. Now, friends, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets on the table. Pockets that mark the difference between a gentleman and a bum. With a capital B and that rhymes with P and that stands for pull. And all week long, your River City youth will be frittering away. I say, your young men will be frittering. Frittering away their noon time, supper time, chore time, too. Get the ball in the pocket, never mind getting dandelions pulled or the screen door patched or the beef steak pounded. Never mind pumping any water till your parents are caught with a sister and empty on a Saturday night, and that's trouble. Oh, you got lots and lots of trouble. I'm thinking of the kids in the knickerbocker shirt tails, young ones peeking in the pool hall. Oh, you got trouble. Folks, right here in River City, Trouble with a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pull. Now, I know all you folks are the right kind of parents. I'm going to be perfectly frank. Would you like to know what kind of conversation goes on while they're loafing around the hall? Let me try out Bebo, try out Cubeps, try out TaylorMades, like a cigarette bees, and bragging all about how they're going to cover up the telltale breath with sense. And one fine night, they leave the pool hall, headed for the dance at the armory. Liberty men and scarlet women, and right time, shameless music that drag your son and your daughter. To the arms of a jungle animal instinct, mass <laughs> Friends, the idle brain is the devil's playground trouble. Oh, trouble. Right here in River City. Right here in River City. With the capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pull. That stands for pull. We've surely got trouble. We've surely got trouble. Right here in River City. Right here. Gotta figure out a way to keep the young ones moral after school. Our children's children don't have trouble. Mothers of River City, heed the warning before it's too late. Watch for the telltale signs of corruption. The moment your son leaves the house, does he rebuckle his knickerbockers below the knee? Is there a nicotine stain on his index finger? A dime novel hidden in the corn crib? Is he memorizing jokes out of Captain Billy's whiz bag? Are certain words creeping into his conversation? Words like swell and so's your own man. If so, my friends, you got trouble. Rock and the golden rule. Our children's children don't have trouble. Oh, we've got trouble. We're in terrible, terrible trouble. That game with the 15 number balls is the devil's trouble. Oh, yes, we've got trouble, trouble, trouble. Oh, yes, we've got trouble. Here we go. Here we go. Dear, now your exercises? Yes, ma'am. I don't remember the library being open last 4th of July. Well, it was, Mama, all evening. Mama, a man with a suitcase has been following me all over town. Oh? <laughs> Who? I never saw him before. Did he say anything? He tried. Did you say anything? Mama. 
Mama, of course not. Now don't dawdle, Amaryllis. So don't already me. Get faster, dear. If you don't mind my saying so, it wouldn't hurt to find out what the gentleman wanted. I know what the gentleman wanted. What, dear? You'll find it in Balzac. Well, excuse me for living, but I never read it. Neither has anyone else in this town. There you go again with that same old comment about the low mentality of River City people and taking it Madison Public Library was entrusted to me for the purpose of improving River City's cultural level. I can't help my concern that the ladies of River City keep ignoring all my counsel and advice. But darling, if a woman's got a husband and you've got none, why should she take advice from you? Even if you can quote balls, I think Shakespeare and all them other highfalutin Greeks. Mama, if you don't mind my saying so, you have changing every subject. Now I haven't changed the subject. I was talking about that stranger. What stranger? With the suitcase who may be your very last chance. Mama, do you think that I'd allow a common basher? Now really, Mama, I have my standards where men are concerned and I have no intention. I know all about your standards if you don't mind my saying so. There's not a man alive who could hope to measure up to your blend of heart. Run in St. Paganor, Webster, you can talk this for yourself. Out of your Irish imagination, your Irish he lisps, Amaryllis. That's just part of it. What's the other part? Well, never mind, dear. It's just that he never talks very much. Not even to you and your mother? No, dear. We're all going to have to be a little patient. I'm patient, even though he doesn't ever talk to me. But I do him. Every night, I say goodnight to him on the evening star. You have to do the very second you see it, too, or it doesn't count. Good night, my Winthrop. Good night. Sleep tight. Oh, there, darling, don't cry. You have lots of time. If not Winthrop, there'll be someone else. Never! I'll end up an old maid like you! <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Marion. Can I play my cross hand piece? May I? May I play my cross hand piece? You may. See, with that a sweetheart, you've no one to say goodnight to on the evening star. Well, I know, Amaryllis. For the time being, just say, good night, my someone. And then you can put the right name in when the right someone comes along. All right, it's better than nothing. Yes, it is. Now you can play your crosshand piece. Now I may play my crosshand piece. Good night, my 
grateful to my wife, Eulalie McKechnie Chin, for leading the singing. And to Jason Squires for his fine stereopticon sides. And to Ethel Toffelmeyer, our fine player piano player, is Pipiana. As mayor of River City, I welcome you, River City Zens, to the 4th of July exercises set up here in Madison Gymnasium. Account the weather. Four score and seven. Four score and seven years ago. Ah. The members of the school board will now present a patriotic tableau. Uh oh, the members of the school board will not present a patriotic tableau. Some disagreement about costumes, I suppose. Instead, the Watani girls of the local wigwam of Hiawatha will present a spectacle. My wife. <laughs> in which my wife, you lady, Maketne Shin, will take the leading part. in the Indian tongue. In, teen, tother, feather, fip. will recover. No thanks to a certain young ruffian who's a disgrace to our entire city. Four score and seven years ago our forefathers brought the pain fireworks spectacle, the last days of Pompeii I will take place. <laughs> Providing the rain stops by 9.30. It'll take place out to Madison Picnic Park in the far meadow across the creek from the pest house. How could it be raining? Didn't the Gazette predict fair? Yeah, it sure did, Ewart. That's why we're all prepared for a storm. The Gazette is after it most of the time, and you know it, Jason. You wouldn't last very long in the banking business being out here most of the time. No, no, we're 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 the Four score and seven years ago. Get on with the exercises. We don't want any more exercises till we get this pool table matter settled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's protect our children. Yeah, yeah. Resist sin and corruption. Yeah. Resist sin and corruption. Smite that devil and keep our young boys pure. Pure boys. Friends, may I have your attention, please? Attention, please. I can deal with your troubled friends with the wave of my hand, this very hand. Please observe me, if you will. I'm Professor Harold Hill, and I'm here to organize the River City Boys Band. Oh, thank my friends, how could any pool table ever hope to compete with a gold trombone? Remember, my friends, what a handful of trumpet players did to the famous fable walls of Jericho? Oh, build your parlor walls, come a-tumbling down. Oh, a band go to a 
up, my friend. Oh, yes, I mean a boys' band. Do you hear me? I say River City's got to have a boys' band, and I mean she needs it today. Well, Professor Harold Hill's on hand, and River City's going to have her boys' band. As sure as the Lord made little green apples, and that band's going to be in uniform. Johnny, Billy, Teddy, Fred, and you'll see the glitter of crashing cymbals. And you'll hear the thunder of rolling drums, the shimmer of trumpets. Ta -ta -da! And you'll feel something akin to the electric thrill I once enjoyed when Gilmore, Liberati, Pat Conway, the great creator, W.C. Handy, and John Philip Sousa all came to town on the very same historic day. <laughs> 76 trombones led the big parade with 110 cornets close at hand. They're followed by rows and rows of the finest virtuosos, the cream of every famous band. 76 trombones caught the morning sun with 110 cornets right behind. There were more than a thousand reeds springing up like weeds. There were horns of every shape and kind. There were copper bottom timpani and horse platoons. Thundering, thundering all along the way. Double bell euphoniums and big bassoons. Each bassoon having his big fat say. There were 50 mounted cannon in the battery. Thundering, thundering louder than before. Clarinets of every size and trumpeters would improvise a full octave higher than the score.
like a brass band to stir a fella up when I hear them trombones? Nah, it's them peckhorns really do it. Bet Chesterfield doesn't have anything like it. Or even Des Moines. I'll stake my River City band against any town west of Chicago. <laughs> what band? Honestly, a bunch of grown men. Along comes this fly-by-night salesman, and you're all taken in. Hey, she's right. Ned, this demands emergency action. That man's a spellbinder. Why, I haven't seen Iowa people this excited since the night Frank Gotch and Strangler Lewis lay on the mat for three and a half hours without moving a muscle. Yes, I want his credentials. Hey, grab that hoodlum. He almost blew up, Mrs. Shin. Thank you, Professor. I have to make an example out of him, ringleader, you know. What he does, the gang does. Geely, Clyde, let me go. You wild kid, you hanging around my oldest girl. His father's one of them day laborers south of town. You wild kid, tagging down Main Street after my oldest girl last Sunday. I wasn't either tagging. Don't you counterdict me. We's just walking together, Geely, Clyde. Oh, you watch your phraseology. I know what you're doing, because my little Gracie Senior, now you stay away from my oldest girl, or I'll tell you who laid the rails. Hill. Uh, yes, sir. I'll see you Monday morning about this band thing over to City Hall. 10 o'clock. Sharp. Men, I want this spellbinder's credentials. Oh, Constable, I'll be responsible for the boy. Oh, you don't know this kid, Professor. He's tough. He's got his gang waiting right over there. Oh, I'll be careful. Now, Tommy, I'd like to talk to you about the band. Aw, oh, gee, Professor, that's for the little kids. No, 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 I'm not talking about you playing it. Now, you're mechanically minded, aren't you? Ever do anything with perpetual motion? <laughs> Nearly had it a couple of times. <laughs> you did, huh? Well, you're my man. Now, do you realize nobody has ever invented the music holder for the marching piccolo player? Well, uh, no place to hang the music. Geely, Clyde, I wonder where I could get some wire from. Look in your cellar. That's where people keep wire. <laughs> Oh, and Tommy. Yes, sir. Now, Constable, I'll show you how to break up a gang. Oh, young lady. Oh, miss. What's your name? Zanita. Oh, I didn't know you was beckoning to me. Ye gods. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Tommy Gillis? Well, um... Tommy, this is Zanita. Escort the young lady home. Oh, only I'm not going home. I'm going to the library. Ye gods. <laughs> <laughs> then escort the young lady home by way of the library. By way of the candy kitchen. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do I have to? You have to. Yes, sir. <laughs> you <got it. laughs> Professor, you're a pretty bright young fella. You made a couple of mistakes, though. Oh? The mayor happens to own the billiard parlor and that new pool table. Uh, oh, and uh, what was my other mistake? That Zanita? She's the mayor's oldest girl. <laughs> Just a minute, Professor. We'd like to have your credentials. We're the yes. school board. Academic certificates. Nothing of the kind. We need letters and papers. No, make him put up a bond. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What am I hearing? Say... Ice cream. Ice cream, but I'm not a singer, young man. All right, all right, all right, all right. Talk then. Down here. Ice cream. Talk slow. Ice cream. See? Singing is only sustained talking. Now you, ice cream. Now you, right here. Ice cream. Now you, sir. Ladies, from now on, you'll never see one of those men without the other three. Oh, Professor, you're wrong. Why, they hate each other for 15 years. Ice cream! Ice cream! Ice cream! <laughs> How can there be any... Come 
so excited about the band. Yes. I'm Ethel Toffelmeyer, the pianola girl. Yes. And this is Mrs. Squires and Mrs. Higgs. And of course, you've met Eulalie McKechnie Shin, the mayor's wife. Isn't this exciting, Eulalie? Oh, I couldn't say. I could not say. Oh, no, I could not say it this time. My husband will wish to investigate, I'm sure, and naturally, I'm reticent. Oh, yes, I am reticent. Of course, Mrs. Shin, I understand. But you see, part of my music plans includes a committee of the dance and... Oh, no, wait, wait, oh, Mrs. Shin. Do that again. What? I, I have no idea. What Your foot? The way you raised it just now. Oh, well, I have a bunion there that bothers me. I have to stretch it, you see, it hurts. Oh, what grace! What natural flow of rhythm! What expression of line and movement! Oh, Mr. Hill! Oh, you must accept the chairmanship of the Ladies' Auxiliary for the classic... Dance! Mustn't she, ladies? Oh, oh yes! Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Every move you make, Mrs. Shin, bespeaks Delsart. Oh, yes. Will you? Will you? Say yes, Mrs. Shin. <laughs> you lady, McKechnie Shin. <laughs> well, I, well, that is, I, dancing. <laughs> then you accept? Yes, indeed. And I would just like to say how grateful oh, I am for- Oh, thank you. And now about the young lady who plays the piano, Marion Peru, I believe. <gasps> Well, after all, she is the librarian. Pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, cheep, 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 tug a lot, pick a little more, pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, cheep, 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 tug a lot, pick a little more, pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, cheep, 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 tug a lot, pick a little more, pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, cheep, 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 She made berets and overtures to a man who never had a friend in this town till she came here, old Miser Madison. Miser Madison? Mm -hmm. Madison Gymnasium, Madison Picnic Park, Madison Hospital. That Miser Madison? Exactly! Who did he think he was, anyway? Well, I should say, yeah. show off. Oh, gave the town the library to, didn't he? Yeah, that's just it. When he died, he left the library building to the city. But he left all the books to her. She was seen coming and going from his place. Oh, yes, so oh, yes, that woman made brains and all the jewels. Top of the guilt page, guaranteed. She had a golden glitter eye and a silver voice. Get out of it, please. Just belt her down and you reveal a lump of lead as cold as steel. Here, where a woman's heart should be. Oh, yes, gentlemen, I have just what you need over at my 
hotel. Come with me. Good night, ladies. Good night, ladies. Good night, ladies. Good night, ladies. We're going to leave you now. Farewell, ladies. you live alone or anything? No. I've got some wonderful caramels over at the hotel if you Mr. care to. Mr. Hill. Ah, uh, Professor Hill. Professor of what? At what college do they give a degree for harassing women on the street like a Saturday night rowdy at a public dance hall? Oh, I wouldn't know about that. You see, I'm a conservatory man myself. Gary, Indiana, gold medal class, aunt five. Even should that happen to be true, does that give you any right to follow me around wherever I go? Oh. And another thing, Mr. Hill. I am not as easily hoodwinked or mesmerized as some of the people in this town. And I think it only fair to warn you that I have a shelf full of reference books in that library, which may very well give me some interesting information about you. Oh, hey, Greg. Oh, hiya, Marcellus. And don't call me Greg. How'd you make out with a piano teacher? Scrumptious. Ate out of the palm of my hand the minute I tip my hat. She did, huh? <laughs> Boy, did you cut a swath tonight. <laughs> For a minute there, even I thought you knew something about conducting a band. <laughs> it was like when you used to imitate that band leading fella back in Joplin. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Ah, kid stuff. Oh, I'm in rare form these days, son. Just you keep your eyes on me for the next four weeks. Four weeks? It only used to take ten days for the instruments to arrive. It still does. But it takes four weeks for the uniforms. Uniforms? Greg, you haven't had a uniform. Uniforms and instruction book. Instruction book, Greg! You cannot pass yourself off as a music teacher. Oh. Not for any four weeks. Mars! You don't know one note from another. I've got a revolutionary new method called the Think System. Where you don't bother with notes. Yeah, but in four weeks, those people are going to want to hear the music. You'll have to lead a band. Ah, but when uniforms arrive, they forget everything else. At least long enough for me to collect, then leave. <laughs> this is a refined operation, son. And I've got it timed right down to the last wave of the brakemans and on the last train out of town. <laughs> and now, Mr. Washburn, if you'll excuse me. Hey, you line yourself up a little canoodle in that. Well? Hey, I could set you up with Ethel's sister, lovely girl, teach you Sunday school. <laughs> no wide-eyed, eager, wholesome, innocent Sunday school teacher for me. That kind of girl spins webs no spider ever. Listen, boy. A girl who trades on all that purity merely wants to trade my independence for her security. The only affirmative she will file refers to marching down the aisle. No golden, glorious, gleaming, pristine goddess. Oh, no, sir. For no Diana do I play for, and I can tell you that right now. I snarl, I hiss. How can ignorance be compared to bliss? I spark, I fizz. For the lady who knows what time it is, I cheer, I rave. For the virtue I'm too late to save. The sad but wiser girl for me. Breathless baby doll baby. Oh, no, sir. That kind of child ties knots. No sailor ever knew. I prefer to take a chance on a more adult romance. Go to a youngest who keeps resisting. All the time she keeps insisting. No wide-eyed, wholesome, innocent female. No, sir, for she's the fisherman. I'm the fish you see. What? I flinch. I shy. When the last with a delicate air goes by, I smile. I grin. When the gal with a touch of sin walks in, I hope, I pray, for Hester 
to win just one more A to sadder but wiser girls the girl for me the sadder but wiser girl for me Change the subject. Is something the matter? Same thing is the matter that is always the matter here. Is this the sort of book you give my daughter to read? The ruby hat of Omar Khayyam. I am appalled. I did recommend it. It's beautiful Persian poetry. It's dirty Persian poetry. People lying out in the woods eating sandwiches, getting drunk, drinking directly out of jugs with innocent young girls. No daughter of mine. Mrs. Shin, the Rubiat of Omar Khayyam is a classic. Oh, it's a smutty book. Like most of the others you keep here, I dare say. Uh, honestly, Mrs. Shin, wouldn't you rather your daughter read a classic than Eleanor Glynn? What Eleanor Glynn reads is her mother's problem. Just you keep your dirty books away from my daughter. <laughs> Everything and it doesn't make any difference. What are you talking about? Oh, you're probably very young then. Anyone can make a mistake. What? Oh, no apologies, no explanations, please. I'll only be in town a short while and, uh, the sadder but wiser girl for me. Will you please make your selection and leave? I have. Well, what do you want to take out? The librarian! Quiet, please. Listening, Marion. Look. Marion. Marbles. Six steelies, eight eggies, a dozen peewees, and one big glassy with an American flag in the middle. I think I'll drop them. No! Shh! Madam, I pray. To catch your ear, I love you madly, madly, madam librarian, Marion, heaven help us, if the library caught on fire, and the volunteer hose brigade men had to whisper the news to me. Marion, madam librarian. I need you badly, badly, madam librarian. Marion, if I stumbled low and I busted my whatchamacallit, I could lie on your floor unnoticed till my body had turned to care. Madam librarian. Now in the You dear, I love you madly, madly, madam librarian. Marion, it's a long lost cause I can never win. For the civilized world accepts as unforgivable sin. Any talking out loud with any librarian, such as me. Oh, madam librarian. 
Ladies Dance Committee meets Tuesday nights. Marshmallow. <laughs> Pretty good morning. Eleven sales out of twelve tries. But I'll tell you what. It's um, it's almost noon. You better go home and get some dinner. I'll try a couple by myself. All right. Goodbye, Professor. Thanks, Tommy. <laughs> specimen has an unusual tone quality to it. Flattery will not avail you. Solicited is a statutory in this county, malfeasance without a permit. And why haven't you been over to City Hall with your references? Just missed you, I guess. Uh, oh, Mr. Mayor, your hand. Oh, no. Why, why? That spread of the little finger. It's hereditary. Oh, it is? Oh, what does that mean? It means that your son's little finger is perfectly situated to operate the spit valve of a B-flat flugelhorn. Is that good? Good. It means that America has at last produced an artist who can flugel the minute waltz in 50 seconds. Oh, how do I get one of those horns? I'm right here, Mr. Mayor. Oh, oh. And now that'll be $17 import fee. Yes, sir. Just think I could have been left out of... <laughs> I haven't got any son. What? You unscrupulous flu by night. You want to flip your lips. George! I never had a son. I never said you did. What do you know? Well, I'd certainly know if I'd given you a son. Well, I'm not talking to you. Who are you talking to? Him. Ooh. Oh, never mind. Zanita, call Dr. Clark for your father. <laughs> Mrs. Perot, do you realize you have the facial characteristics of a coronet virtuoso? I don't know that I understand you entirely, Professor. Well, if your boy has that same firm chin, those splendid cheek muscles, by George! Well, not that he could ever really be great, you understand, but... Oh, is that so? And in the name of St. Bridget, why not? Well, you see all the really great cornet players were Irish. Oh, Clark, oh, Mendez, oh, Klein. Oh, Professor, we are Irish. No, no, really. Well, that clinches its sign here, Mrs. Peru. Your boy was born to play the cornet. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, now, that'll be seven dollars earnest money. Oh, Oh. And nothing more due until the first installment payable on opening a band practice. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And then, now, of course, I'll need the boy's measurements for his uniform. His uniform? Why, hello, son. Why, certainly his uniform. And not a penny due till delivery. Which gives him four weeks to enjoy, to anticipate, to imagine. At no cost whatever. Never allow the demands of tomorrow to interfere with the pleasures and excitement of today. We'll have a... a... Uh, oh, a stripe! Why, certainly, my boy. A wide red stripe on each side. What do you think of that? Oh, you'll have to excuse Winthrop, Professor. We can't get him to say three words a day, even to us. And if you can get him to play in the band, you'll have St. Michael's own way with you. But, if anybody can do it, I'll bet you can. Out of a crowd, I'd pick you for a hot carrying, clay pipe smoking, shamrock wearing, heart playing, performing, pinching, terrace hall, minstrel singing Irishman, big govern me, jabbers, where are you from, me boy? Gary, Indiana. I knew it, Gary. Where did you say? Gary, Indiana. In fact, Gary Conservatory was my alma mater. Was she now? <laughs> Why, yes, gold medal class, art five. How to do, Miss Peru? How to do, Mr. Hill. 
Of course, Peru. I thought the name sounded familiar. I've tried to see you since the other night. He wants to put Winthrop in the band. We're not interested, Mama. But Marion, the boy might have his father's musical gift. He does have my jaw, you know. Your husband musical? Well, I'd like to have a talk with him. I'm Do you burst in on everyone's home like this, prying into personal affairs? We are not interested. Marion. Well, that's one for and one against. Why not let the boy's father decide? The boy's father is dead. Anything else? Oh, I'm sorry. But that's all the more reason why your brother should have something like this. My brother is a ten-year-old problem child who can't understand why his father was taken away. Would you care to explain it to him? He's been brooding about it for two years. And as to your musical tricks, why don't you go into business with some nice carnival man who sells gold-painted watches and glass diamond rings? Musical tricks! Why, Miss Peru? Oh, I get the feeling she likes the idea. <laughs> Oh, a little cautious, perhaps, but I admire that in a woman. Now, just keep me alive, and I'll be back later in the One week. One moment, Professor Hill. About the boy's measurements, I make all his clothes. Sleeve 21, waist 18, crotch 14. Fine, fine, fine. That's all I mean. Now, I must get back Professor, to the hotel. Professor, I do hope you'll excuse Marion. She's not really... Oh, please, please, please. Don't worry about a thing. I'm sure that at heart, she's as lovely as yourself. Good day to you, Widow Peru. Oh. <laughs> has he gone? He has. And I hope not forever. Darling, don't you ever think about your future? Gary, Indiana, conservation class of Arc 5, no, darling. Now, Mama, surely a girl's future doesn't depend on encouraging every fast talking, self-centered, woman-chasing traveling man that comes to town. And the fact that he claims his commodity is music does not in this particular case impress me. All right, darling, all right. Only it's a well-known principle. If you keep the flint in one drawer and the steel in another, you'll never strike much of a fire. Winthrop! Winthrop, I know you're there. Please go to the library and ask Miss Grubb to give you the book I've set aside. It's the Indiana State Educational Journal, 1890 to 1910. It's a large brown volume with black corners. Do I have to? You don't have to talk to anyone. I've written it all down. Thank you, dear. Now what are you up to? Why do you need books at this hour of the night? I have a feeling the Indiana Journal may help me poke some very large holes in the professor's claims. Well, I give up. At your age, if you don't mind my asking, what kind of a white knight do you expect to come riding along? Well, I'm not waiting for Luther Griner, who backs me into the ancient history shelf every time he comes into the library. He does. Or Ed Gamage and that buggy of his with the removable back seat. But I'm not waiting for a man in shining white armor either. Mom.
right, then meet me after supper. But I can't. It's Epworth Lake night. <laughs> meet you where? Footbridge. Oh, you see, that's just like I said. Last time the lumber yard and now the footbridge. And where will you meet me the time after that? The black hole of Calcutta? Ye gods! <laughs> but I only want to show you my invention. What invention? A music holder for a marching piccolo player. It still has a couple of minor flaws. See, when you hold it tight enough to keep the music steady, it cuts off the circulation and you can't wiggle your fingers. <laughs> Meanwhile, you could go blind. Is that the first thing I said or not? Yes, Joe. Yes, the very first thing I said or I'll eat hay with the horse. Get that Spellbinder's credentials. I said it the morning of July 4th. 19 and 12. <laughs> and now look. My wife is out dancing till all hours of the night instead of being in the hall. But George! The school board is singing up street and down alley instead of attending to city business. My oldest daughter is boodling around with a wild kid and my business has fallen off. So far, I can't find a balance sheet. Mayor Shin. I have found something very interesting in this book about Professor Hill's alma mater. His who? His university. Oh, I know all about that. In fact, it's the only thing I can ever get out of him. Gary Conservatory, class of art five. Well, if you just read a little bit about the conservatory, I don't think you'll have to look any further. It's here on page. Hop, hop, the Volkswagen wagon just came up from the depot. A likely story at this time of day. Not sad. The Wells Fargo wagon? It could be the band instrument. The band instrument, uh, yes. <laughs> Sugar on my birthday. In March, I got a great Mackin' And once I got some grapefruit from Tampa. Montgomery Ward sent me a bathtub and a cross Oh, the Wells Fargo wagon is a common now. Is it a free surprise of COG? It could be Curtis. Or it's a double boiler. Or it could be. Yes, it could be. Yes, you're right. It surely could be.
And now, Miss Marion, about that book. I'm George Tempest Fugit. You watch your phraseology. Get along if you want to. I gotta get something from the librarian about that book. The Ladies' Dance Committee meets Tuesday nights at the high school.
Well, Sarge's presentation will be the highlight of the last few social life. Oh, my God, my God. All right, gentlemen, if you're ready. And please, ladies, remember, don't make me have to tell you again. Please, keep your faces to the audience. All right, Mr. John Mark, if you're ready. It's you in the sunrise. It's you in my car. It's you all the way into town. It's your sweet hello dear that sets me up. And it's your got to go dear that gets me down. It's you.
back. Why, you... We'd rather do it in front of your back. Do what? Oh, never mind. Sunita's scared of you, but I'm not. I should think you'd hate to have your own daughter scared of you, Ajili Clyde. Oh, I'm gonna warn you just once more. If I ever see you touching my oldest girl again, I'm gonna by God horse whip you till hell won't have it again. George! Not one poop out of you, madam. I think he means peep. <laughs> Yes! Now get out of this public building. I got as much right in this public building as anybody. Right, what right do you have? Aiden a bet in the sw this swindling symbol salesman? You know what I see written all over you? Reform school. Now get out of here, you wild kid. Get out! Papa, please! If capitalists like you make blood in the marketplace, he got... You watch your phraseology, young woman. Now get home. You lady! Oh, but George, I... You tend to your dance. My dance? <laughs> I'll handle Zanita, hanging around with wild kids from the wrong side of town. Mr. Mayor, if I could just make you understand... Well, you can. Oh, and by the way, thanks for nothing. I read that book you give me cover to cover all week, and I didn't find one thing. Mr. Mayor, if you please. I'll sell your hash as soon as I get these premises off my oldest girl. Yes. All right, but in the meantime, I want you to know that I'm vouching for Tommy Chilas. That boy's got the confidence of every kid in this town. You'll be standing in line waiting to shake his hand by the time our band plays its first concert. Oh, by the time your band plays its first concert, the individual members have to foregather in wheelchairs. A kind of their broken legs from tripping over their beards. And let me tell you something else, my fine young feather, my feathered young. Oh, never mind. Oliver, JC, Olin, Ewart. I want this man's references, and I want him tonight. Now, don't let him out of your sight. He's slipperier than a Mississippi sturgeon. You mean you want us to get his credentials? Get his papers, or get him in jail. I couldn't make myself any clearer if I was a button hook in the well water. Professor Hill, I think Mayor Shin has behaved abominably. And I think it was wonderful of you coming to Tommy's defense. Oh, that was nothing. Oh, yes, it was. No, 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 no. A man can't dodge the issue every time a little personal risk is involved. I mean, what does the poet say? A coward dies a thousand deaths. The brave man, only 500. <laughs> Unfortunately, of course, the mayor was already pretty mad on account of his billiard parlor. Now, I suppose a recommendation from a musical authority like yourself would help, but I couldn't think of asking you to do a thing like that. Why, Professor Hill, I... You would? Uh, well, I'd be glad to. I just wish I were a little better informed. Mm -hmm. I've been meaning to talk to you about Winthrop's cornet. Oh, his cornet. Mother of Pearl yes, Keys. Oh, I'm sure it's brass. fine, but you see, he never touches it. Well... Oh, the first week he made a few experimental... Blats, I guess you'd say. Blats, yes. Then he sings the minuet in G constantly. Mm. La -di -da -di -da -di -da -di -da. La -di -da La -di -da but he never La -di -da. touches the cornet. Well, he uh, told me you said it wasn't necessary. Oh, he tells well. me about some think system. Says if he just thinks the minuet in G, he doesn't have to bother with the notes. Now, Professor. Oh, now, Miss Marion, the think system is a revolutionary method, I'll admit. But so was Galileo's conception of the heavens, Columbus's conception of the egg, of, of, of the globe, <laughs> uh, Bach's conception of the well-tempered clavichord. Hmm? Now, 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 I cannot discuss these things here in public, but if you'll allow me to call. When may I call? Oh, oh well, any night this week.
Congratulations. You know, all week long I've tried to give you fellas my references and credentials, but every time you seem to get off the subject somehow. Now I have just what you need up in my hotel room. Take me a second. Sorry, Fred, I'll have to come with you. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let me see if I have my key. <laughs> oh, what, what is this? Um, hmm. <gasps> a testimonial from Madame Ring. The only female bassoon player ever to appear on the Red Path circuit. Her stage name, of course. Actually, she was from Moline. Lida Rose Quackenbush. Did I see that for a minute? Oh, you'll never forget the name. Lida Rose. <gasps> yeah, the same as the old song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lida Rose, I'm home again, Rose. To get the sun back in the sky. Lighter rose, I'm home again, rose. About a thousand kisses shy. Ding dong ding. I can hear the chapel bell chime. Ding. Question. I'll pop the question. Lighter rose, I'm home again, rose. Without a sweetheart to my name. Lighter rose, now everyone knows that I am hoping you're the same. So. My love song, not fancy or fine. Light a rose, oh, won't you be? Light a rose, oh, light a rose, oh, light a rose. 
stop arguing with yourself. Will you ever tell him? Won't you ever tell him? Ah, yes, I know. I'll fiddle sticks. Just open your mouth and let it come out. No, Mama. No, nothing. If he ever comes to call again, you'll see him alone. And if you haven't got the gumption to tell him how you tell feel, him, well, there's nothing wrong with a lady like Hint. Mama! Winthrop, where have you been? Fishing? Fishing? With Harold. You mean Professor Hill? Mm-hmm. And look, I saw some worms uh, <laughs> Did you have a good time? Squash it. Tell him about it sometown, Gary and Deanna. And he said it take me someday. And he told me I saw a heart of any essence in it. Gary and Deanna, Gary and Deanna, Gary and Deanna, let me say it once again. Gary and Deanna, Gary and Deanna, Gary and Deanna, that's the town that knew me when. If you like the power, I think I'll let you change times. That's how I have to get on to so I can sing your face. I will say the start of a bit of presentation. There is just one place that might I. The Shin home is on East Elm. This is West Elm. Ah, uh, crammy. Say, uh, say you're the piano teacher in town. You must know something about this fella Hill forming a boys band here. Yes. Well, don't let it worry you no more. I got the goods on him in spades. That swindling two-bit thimble rigger. That's why I gotta see Shin. I'm just passing through, though. Number eight only makes a 15-minute water stop. Sure do wish it was 20, though. Would sure like to concentrate five minutes on you, girl, girl. Who are you? Name's Charlie Cow. And the salesman. <laughs> but just now, I'm out to protect the good name of the traveling fraternity from this swindler. Well, Mr. Cowell, you're making a big mistake. Mistake my old lady's corset cover. That guy's been the raspberry seed in my wisdom tooth just long enough. He's spoiling the noise for me. I'm not gonna let him spoil Iowa. Say, what kind of piano teacher are you anyway? You didn't see right through him? Why, he's no more professor than oh, I am. Oh, I know all about that. Band leaders are always called professor. Why, it's a harmless deception. He's a fine director and... Now, wait a minute. Fine director. Have you heard one note of music out of any band? Well, no, but that's... But nothing, girly girl. He never formed a band in his life, and he never will. If you would just listen to me for one minute. Oh, I'd like to. I'd like to do more than that if I had the time. I sure have got the inclination. But I gotta get back on that train, and I gotta leave this dynamite with somebody on the way to the depot. Bye, girly girl. See you next time through. Oh, you'll never catch that train at the depot. You better catch it at the crossing. <sighs> no, sir. I've got to leave word with somebody. And I can see you're not the one to leave it with. Oh, well, just a minute, Mr. Cowell. Well, you don't know me yet. <laughs> is, uh, 
that an invitation? Well, no. <laughs> uh, no, what I meant was, uh, well, I don't know you. Yeah. Ah, but I'd need more time anyway. I mean... <laughs> as well as I'd like to. No trouble there, girly girl. <laughs> I've never met a man who sells anvils before. <laughs> That's something quite, uh, different. <laughs> Takes a real salesman, I can tell you that much. <laughs> anvils have a limited appeal, you know. Oh, what am I doing? If I miss that train, I'll lose my job. And I gotta leave word with somebody about that Swindler Hill. Well, leave word with me. Not on your tin type, girly girl. How do I know you'll deliver these letters? Try me. There's your train. Now run for it. Why, you double dealing little. Who do you think you're protecting? That guy's got a gal in every county in Illinois, and he's taking it away from every one of them. And that's 102 counties, not counting the piano teachers like you. He cozies up to just so they'll keep their mouths shut. Either one of you has heard the last of me, girly girl. At the least suggestion, I'll pop the question. Lie to Rose, I'm home again, Rose, without a sweetheart to my name. Good evening, Miss Marianne. Lie a rose on everyone knows Mary. that I'm hoping you're Mary, dear. Who was you talking to? Oh, why, Professor Hill. Mrs. Peru, top of the evening, Miss Marion. Hey, you and Marion come up and set. I got some jelly on the stove. There's no jelly on the stove, Mama. Well, I'll put some on. Shall we set, as your mother said? Oh, well, I was... Actually... Well, you did ask me to call. Oh, did I? I didn't mean anything by it. Oh, no, Miss Marion, I'm not suggesting that your invitation inferred anything but academic enlightenment. <laughs> the think system. I've been by your house to try to explain it to you a time or two this week, but there always seem to be people around, mostly ladies, I thought. Oh, yes. Uh, Mrs. Squires and several of the ladies. I'm glad. I wouldn't want anybody beating my time. <laughs> You wouldn't? Why, no, ma'am, I wouldn't. <laughs> well, it's evidently not the convenient night. I'll see you at the sociable later. Professor Hill, is it true that you've had a hundred... Well, what I'm trying to say is... Um, yes? Is it true that you've... Uh, Developed a think system? A what? A think system? Oh, think system. <laughs> oh, yes, and, and it's really very simple. As simple as whistling. Nobody has to show you how to use your lips when whistling. You only have to think a tune for it to come out clearly here. Now try this yourself before you ask any questions. I take your word. Could we sit down? <laughs> Are all music teachers as dense as I am? All music teachers? Well, I dare say you've met dozens, even a hundred. Oh, well, I Have wouldn't... they all been as fascinated as I have with the think system? Some more, some less. You know, one young lady thought up the same system before I came to her town. Oh, she showed me a few refinements, though. <laughs> oh, I see. Have I said something wrong? No. <laughs> No, Professor Hill, please don't let me keep you. I'm sure you have many more important things to do than to explain the think system to me. Can't think of and one. I must be very dull company for a man of your experience. Oh, now say it. Where'd you get an idea like that? Well, one hears rumors of traveling salesmen. Oh, now, Miss Marion, you mustn't believe everything you hear. 
After all, one even hears rumors about librarians. Oh, I suppose you're referring to Uncle Maddie. Uncle Maddie? Mr. Madison, my father's best friend. No matter what they say, he left me in a short job so that Mother and Winthrop and I would have some security. <gasps> oh, surely you don't believe that. No, of that. course not. That's exactly what I'm saying. But why do you think people start those rumors? Narrow-mindedness. Jealousy. Jealousy mostly, I guess. Exactly. And jealousy mostly starts rumors about traveling salesmen. What have you heard? Oh, uh, well, nothing about you personally, uh, just uh, generally. What have you heard generally? Oh, but of course. Well, that stands to reason that, uh, well, disappointment and jealousy could, could lead to, I mean, take you for example, your attentions to customers and, well, teachers might easily be misinterpreted, now mightn't they? I mean, now, honestly, mightn't they? Why? And so, as you say, if another salesman or somebody were jealous, well, they could be downright lies, couldn't they? What could? Rumors and things. Why, of course. <laughs> well, it just goes to show you, you shouldn't believe everything you hear. I mean, if you just discuss things. Why, Miss Marion, I would be delighted to discuss anything in the world with you, but couldn't we do it sitting down? You do sit. I mean, your knees bend and all. <laughs> well, we could sit on the porch steps. We could also sit on a large hollow log over at the footbridge. Oh, no. No, I couldn't think of it. I've never been to the footbridge with a man in my life. Just to talk? Um, I've got to change for the sociable. Meet me there in 15 minutes. No, I just can't, please. Um, some other time. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, my dear little librarian. Pile up enough tomorrows and you'll find that you've collected nothing but a whole lot of empty yesterdays. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd like to make today worth remembering. Oh, so would I. <laughs> the footbridge. Fifteen minutes? Fifteen minutes? Mama! What? I just told Professor Hill I'd meet him at the footbridge in fifteen minutes. Glory be and saints be praised. It works. What does? The think system. <laughs> I've been using it on you from the parlor.
Greg. The uniforms have arrived. The kids are in them already. Those people are gonna be screaming for music if those kids show up at the social club. Yeah. Now look, here's most of the money. I got Tommy to collect it. He's trying to keep everybody together at least, pretend pretending to hold a practice over at the lumber yard. I must go get the rig. I got it. Now, what time's the freight go? 9.40 at the junction. 9.40? Well, it's not even 8.30 yet. Look, you want a turtle whirl around here, get yourself caught in a bunny trap, that's your yes, business. Mars, don't worry, I'll meet you at the hotel in plenty of time. Now, go. Miss Mary, you're late. You said 15 minutes. No, 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 I meant you were about... Well, I'd say you're about 26 years late. It took you all this time to get to the footbridge with the fella. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to know the truth, it was almost longer. Oh? Halfway here, I nearly decided to turn back. Though I suppose I'm not the first person to find it easier to think clearly when not under the spell of your salesmanship. Oh, now, Miss Marion, surely you don't think I'm trying to sell you anything? No. No, you've given me something. That's why I decided to come. I don't recall giving you... Oh, but you have. Well, it's something beautiful. That's why I came, and I'm glad. Now, please don't be afraid that I expect too much more. I know one can't expect a traveling salesman to stay put. I know there have been many ports of call, and there will be many more. But that's no reason for me not to be grateful to you for what you will have left behind for me. Marion, there's a lot of things you don't know about me. Hey, wait! 
Excuse me? I'm expecting a cable from Hector Berlioz. This could be it. Now what? So who's the salesman here, huh? Looks like she's selling and you're buying. You look, you nuts. I didn't know I was going to be able to leave tonight. I had to keep her off balance, didn't I? I told you. Yeah, well, right now she looks so off balance to me, I couldn't tell her from a cat boat in a hurricane. Listen, Buster Brown, I came up through the ranks in this skirmish and I'm not resigning without my commission. Yeah, but Greg, you're not going to get anywhere right here on the footbridge. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Look, there's a place over Madison Park near the sociable. Makes the footbridge look like the old lady's home. Now beat it. Go get the rig. <laughs> Never a peaceful moment in the music business. Now, where were we? You were about to tell me what I don't know about you. Uh, yeah, well, we really don't have to go into that right now, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. Or ever, for that matter, Harold. The librarian hasn't felt much like doing research lately. But she did plenty when you first came here. Oh, uh, about what? Oh, about Professor Harold Hill. Gary Conservatory of Music, gold medal class of Art Five. <laughs> Harold, there wasn't any Gary Conservatory in Art Five. Oh, well, there certainly was. Because must the do. town wasn't even built until Art Six. I'll see you at the sociable. You knew all the time. Well, since July 7th, three days after you came here, I uh, tore this page out of the Indiana Journal. It was originally intended to be used against you, but now I give it to you with all my heart. But if you knew, why didn't you? Why, you little... <laughs> While a hundred and ten cornets played the air And I modestly took my place As the one and only face As I oompahed up and down the square With a hundred and ten cornets right behind. Our star is shining its bright as light. There were horns of every shape and color. Now, good night, my someone. Good night. Greg, Greg, this guy's crazy. He's going all over town, spilling everything. I'll say I'm crazy. I missed my train. Probably lost my job. But I finally caught up with the hill. And now you're going to pay. It'd have been in a clink by now if it hadn't have been for that piano teacher. I told her all about you. And what did she do? Lolly gags me around till I couldn't get to shin. Why, that little dried up man hungry doxy. That round heel physic. Oh. oh! Get out of here. I'll kill you, you dirty nut. You big bully. You big blow off. Well, I'll stay around here just long enough to see to it that you get yours up, down, through, and sideways. <laughs> Why, you never even knew the territory. Greg, here's your stuff. The rig's in the alley. Come on, hurry up!
You gullible green grass goats! Can't you get it through your heads that you're being swindled out of your eye teeth right now, this minute? There's a burglar in the bedroom while you're fiddling in the parlor. I'm talking about Harold Hill. Harry! Road agent! Pickpocket! Pickpocket? Same thing. He's had his hand in your wallet and yours, madam. And yours, little lady. Ever since he set foot into this town. Why, there's more evidence than you'll ever have time to read. There is no band. There never was any band, and there never will be any band. And if you don't hunt this man down like a mad dog, there won't be any Harold Hill either. He'll be on the next train out of town. Now, will you believe me? Well, what are we waiting for? I want my money back. Yeah. Money back? I want his hide. Well, after him, and when you find him, bring him back to the schoolhouse. After him, oh. try the logo, oh. oh. the grip, oh. try the mill. Please go, please. Harold, they're even talking about tar and feathers. No, I had to see you. No, it's all right. Don't you know that? You don't owe me a word. Not a word. Now, please. Oh, Harold, right, please. Right, right. No, 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 no. He ain't anywhere around here. Why don't you try down by the creek? Oh, wait a minute here, son. Not until me go. Not until I talk to you for a minute. I won't listen to you and tell the truth anyway. We're two. No. We're two. Tell you anything you want to know. Can you lead a band? No. Are you a big liar? Yes. Are you a dead run crook? Yes. Do they hate you, you big liar? Hey, 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 what's the matter? You wanted the truth, didn't you? Hell, look, I'm bigger than you are, and you're going to stand here and get it all, so you might as well quit wiggling. Now, look, there's two things you're entitled to know. One, you're a wonderful kid. I thought that from the very first. That's why I wanted you in the band, so you'd quit moping around feeling sorry for yourself. What band? I always think there's a band, kid. Well, here's the thing I'm entitled to know. Well, actually, the other thing isn't any of your business now that I think of it. I wish you never come to River City. No, you don't, Winthrop. Yes, sir. Do you believe him? I believe everything he ever said. What he promised us? I know what he promised us. And it all came true just like he said it would. The flags. Every kid walked around here all summer and looked and acted, especially you and the parents, too. Does Mama wish he'd never come to River City? Well, you do, do No, Winthrop. Now, please, now. I can't go, Winthrop. Why not? For the first time in my life, I got my foot caught in the door. There was love all around, but I never heard it sing. there was you. Hey, they're here! That way! That way!
interrupted the program at this point. Now rest assured that this snake in our bosom would have been misapprehended by now. Yes, and remember, I did everything in my power to prevent this dire happening from happening. Four score and seven what years. What have you done to get our money back? That professor collected nearly three hundred dollars for uniforms just tonight, and we haven't seen any uniforms yet. Well, he's slippery, I tell you. I haven't you. seen any uniforms, and I haven't seen our son since just after supper. He's a kidnapper. Virtue has triumphed. The sword of retribution has cut down Professor Hill. If there are those, as I have heard, who are melting tar and collecting feathers, I will not say them nay. Well, I should think there ought to be a few of you who could forget our everlasting Iowa stubborn chip on the shoulder arrogance long enough to remember River City before Harold Hill arrived. Do you remember? Well, do you? Surely there ought to be a few of you who are grateful to him for what he's brought to River City. And if so, I should think you would want to admit it. You're wasting a great deal of time here. If there's a person in this hall who doesn't think that Mr. Hill should be tarred and feathered, let him stand up. You ladies, sit down. Oh. <laughs> Look at the rest of you standing there like a coat of Shropshire sheep. Have you forgotten you bought expensive uniforms, technical manuals, and high-priced band instruments? Have you forgotten the clear understanding and warranty that your children would be taught to play in a band? Well, where's the band? Where's the band? Think, men. <laughs> Think. Thank you.